Greetings, 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 my beautiful black African people. How y'all doing? Let's just see y'all get her glasses on. How y'all doing? Hope everybody is doing well and managing under our current uh, pandemic. Because I don't, I, I've said it before and I just don't think it, it is, I know people are getting sick. I just don't think it is as bad as they want us to believe. Uh, I think there's a, a, a an agenda. That's what Sister Yah believes. Now you can believe whatever you want. I'm not. It's not a requirement that you agree with me. That's just my personal opinion. But I got a, a treat uh, for you all today. You know, um, I am a, a a strong advocate for sitting at the feet of our elders and listening to what they have to say listening to their teachings, taking their advice, because guess what, guys? These people have been on the planet far longer than we have. They've seen a lot. And uh, when they're trying to tell you the way to go, it's imperative that you listen. There's no sense to keep repeating the same mistakes over and over when somebody has lived through and they can tell you, okay, I've been down that road. Don't go that way. This is the way you need to go. It's imperative that you, we, as a people, listen. And historically, as African people, we listen to our elders. Is that not right? We listen to our elders. We respect and honor our elders, even when they leave and go on until the next realm. Uh, we still seek their counsel, and you know, when we, you know, ask them to help us and guide us, because we know that you know they 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 are ahead of us, so they have the answers right? So today I want to bring to you, that's right, Veronica. Veronica says she's agreed. That's absolutely right. So today I want to bring to you a distinguished elder. This elder, <laughs> you know, guys, listen, when, when the elders start calling out to you and say, hey, 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 wait, come here, little girl, come, come. I want to say, I want to talk to you. What can you do? You can't do nothing but do what they say. And so I, I got a message um, two days ago that this elder out of Chicago had heard an interview that I did and he requested, uh, you know, my presence before his feet to listen and to hear what he had to say. And I, I had to honor that. And I wanted him to come here and I wanted him to say what he said to me, because I think it's important that you all hear what this elder has to say. So uh, I want you all to help me welcome our dear elder brother out of Chicago, Illinois, uh, Pleasant Stevens. And we're going to talk about what he's, what, he, what he's telling us we need to do and what he's trying to put in place for our people. Um, and, and we'll just let the elder speak for himself. Okay. All right. Let me get him in the studio. Welcome, 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 dear Elder. How are you doing, Elder Stevens? Good evening, Sister Yao. <laughs> I love you. I love you from your head to your toe. <laughs> Thank you. I'm honored. Thank you. Thank you. When a when an elder uh, is saying that you're on the right track and you're doing things right, you know, then I know I'm doing the right thing. So I want to say thank you so much for having, you know, reaching out to me and, and, and telling your people that you wanted to talk to me. And we had a very good conversation the other day. And I just want, I thought it was imperative uh, that you come on this show and talk to your people, uh, these younger ones, and let them know, you know, what needs to be done. So we'll start by let's let's telling them a little bit about yourself. Let's start there. Tell them about uh, Elder Stevens. Well, I'm a 81 year old old man. I've been through a lot, and I don't know if that's going to be very much that I can add to what you are already doing. I think that you actually uncovered the mistakes that we have made and the things that we have been brought into that we have not a heed to. And I, 
I, uh, I'm so proud of you. Uh, I am trying to find words to say to add to what you are doing because you would free uh, practically all of our people from bondage if they would just listen and follow your lead. You don't, you don't need to be fighting the, the waves to uh, get them on board. They should be flocking to be on board. You shouldn't have to be trying to organize them. They should be already organized to say, Sister Yao, what, what's next for us to do? Because they'd be to actually roll out the seed that you planted for them to do already. Because life is like planting a seed that we have to live by. And being an old country boy from Arkansas, I've lived a pretty good life comparing to what I've had to go through. And now we're setting out the road to for our children and our grandchildren and our great grandchildren because I'm the fifth generation in my family. Mm -hmm. And I don't want any of my family to go through what we've had to go through over the years. Now, let's go back to some of you that have actually experienced some of the stuff that I'm talking about. 51 years ago, Dr. King wanted us to uh, congratulate other people to make us a part of their system. Well, I've always said, we will never be a part of a system who have enslaved us for all of these 400 plus years. Now, if no one that I know of is gonna empty their plate and give it to you for you to be equal to them. That's ludicrous. And I have fought to the nails to get people like Sister Yaw to come on board and do what we have started doing because I'm gonna give you a little hint about what has happened to me, the reason why we started to be become, and I want all of you that's listening to what we have to say to become an independent nation of black folks that's living in America. You have the talent, you have the money, you have the know-how, you have the manpower. So why are you still sniffing up behind somebody else to spend your money, to spend your talent, to tell you what direction to go? I'm gonna share this with you. Dr. King, got killed in Memphis, Tennessee, for asking people to give the uh, uh, men a, a raise to feed their families. Well, I come from a family to where we raised all our food. And to get to where you are today, who are listening to this show today, you have raised the food for everybody in America at one, some point in time. Mm -hmm. So you need to get back and start to raising your food for one, and to trade with each other for another, mm -hmm. and start to create industry for another, because nobody that I know of that's going to give you an upper hand on helping to catch up with what they have took. They have took what we have built. And I want you to look at what's going on today across the, across the country. We have somebody in office now, and I'm going to call their name, and a lot of people don't like it, but this is what I have experienced. And that is Ku Klux Klan killing people off so that they can have control of more and more people so that they can take over and treat your grandkids just like they have treated you and others. Mm -hmm. It sounds harsh, but it's the truth. If you don't put your act together now, you're just wasting time. So I'm 
say to you tonight is that I want you to get on board with, with Sister Yao. And if you need me to speak again, just let Sister Yao know. And I will gladly support her efforts to get you on board and get you straight now on the track that you need to go because you got a lot of these preachers ain't doing nothing for you. And they, they're going to try to keep you in bondage. And I want you to take this to bed with you. What good is a 501c3 and it don't create no industry for you to make a living? So that 501c3 is a piggy bank to take the money back to those people that hate you. So that's pretty much what I have to say, sister y'all. I be I be glad to support. I'm glad to support anything I can do to enhance what you are doing already. Because there's hardly nothing I can add to what you're saying and what you are doing. Because I'm on the same page that you are, and we created this organization, Infinity Building Economics. We created this organization 28 years ago because I lost a son to working for them other folks, and I'm sick of it. Thank you very much. Well, um, Brother Elder Pleasant, thank you. Thank you. And I, you know what? I want to tell you, uh, for a man of of your age who've lived and seen so much in this country to come and and reach out to me to to you know you listen to one of my interviews and you had your people reach out to me and you told me you said you know that I was speaking to your heart and that means so much to me because all I'm trying to do is the same thing. It's like I, I see what the problem is. There's no need for us to be spinning our wheels. And I agree with you 100%. And I know about your program. And I want you to tell our, our people about, our pro, about your program because I know that everybody doesn't want to go to Africa. Me, You and I had this discussion. Some people not going to want to go no matter what we say. They're going to want to stay here. And if they're going to stay here, they need a plan. You can't stay here with under the same conditions that we've been for the past two, three, four hundred years. You got to come with something else. Uh, but I told you straight up, uh, did I not, Elder? I said, I don't believe we can stay with these people in peace. I said, I believe we have to separate. Did I not tell you that? You sure did. And and you and you and I told you I'm going back to Africa. And uh and so, but I do know that we everybody's not gonna go. And and for those who are gonna stay, we have to do things differently. So with that being said, tell us about your program and what you're trying to encourage our people that that are not going to you know for whatever reason they've decided they want to stay here with these these creatures because that's what i call them i call them creatures they aliens creatures i don't know what they are but if they want to stay here with them they need to be self-sustaining uh and i'm gonna share them and let you talk but i want to say this i do not believe uh unless we even if we stay here we have to separate separate economically separate even physically i believe because these people still control our food like you said they still control the water that we drink flint michigan is just a prime example but flint a lot of people don't know flint ain't the only city that's dealing with contaminated water okay so we have to go back and i told you about growing up in mississippi where my grandparents had the farm most of the food that we ate my grandparents grew it you know my granddad had hogs and chickens and eggs and, and my grandma would go out there and pick the greens and the tomatoes and I, we ate off what they we grew you know what i mean but we have in in just uh one generation removed we've lost it all what's going on elder what 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 what, what do we need to do tell these people what we need to do we need to shut them down and start all over again because I'm one of those people that that raise the food that we eat. I'm one of those people whom can make saga molasses today. Mm -hmm. because the 
the way I was taught. Mm -hmm. I did say sorghum molasses. You can't put a better sugar, dose of sugar, other than sorghum molasses that you make, and you raise it in the field, and you don't, you don't have to, you don't have to put any toxic waste in it like we've been getting from the stores. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I ask everybody, if they don't get their act together, they're going to continue to die early at an early age. And their children is going to have all kinds of sickness and pains. We have more hospitals and, and uh, doctor's office today than ever before. I have never seen this many people that actually sick. Now, something has to make you sick to be sick. Mm -hmm. You're not born sick. Right. So I want to get back to the natural source of raising food and producing the food so that we can live a wholesome life. I look at the people, some of the people, are older than I, and I'm 81 years old. And I want to live a long life so that we can take up on the life that I see our elders living in Africa. And as I said, I stated to you uh, maybe several times before, so don't don't get mad at me because I keep making it sound like a broken record. But I'm like James Brown. I like this. And we are creating our own independence of food, the food processing, food process plants, and all the other stuff that we have to consume. If that sounds harsh, then I want you to stay over there and deal with those people that's going to make you sick if you want to. But we want to leave you where you are. All of us that's got good sense are going to leave you where you are. Mm -hmm. You better listen to Sister Yao because we are going back to Africa. <laughs> it's not that far. You know, I was talking to one of my one of my cousins just yesterday. And she was telling me how close she lived to Niag Niagara Falls. 16 hours from Niagara Falls. To, well, when we get ready to go to Africa, is she going to be ready? She said, yes. Her husband has been, I would say, sick for the last seven years and hasn't been, he's been bedridden for seven years because he's been living here in America eating this poison. And uh, she and I, she and I are the same age practically because she's about a year older than I. But you will hear her on these shows as well because we have a, we have a blog talk radio show where uh, Ian and everybody can get on the show if they like. And you can get that information for Sister Y'all. And uh, let's unify and get to take care of the business and stop begging other folks to take care of something that we can take care of ourselves. Because we are the only one that's going to fix it. Absolutely. And it's the only, it's, it's easy to fix, but it takes unity. And we'll try to get you on board with the unity that we are offering you today. And you, all phones ought to be lit up from can to can. <laughs> so that she can uh, bring you on board. I want, I want her to tell you about uh, a dollar thing that she's got hooked up because I'm I'm getting in it, and I want you to be in it. She's got something hooked up about a dollar. Tell her about the dollar <laughs> thing that you're talking about. And how you gonna make people rich? <laughs> make people rich I don't know about that what I what my program is is I'm asking our people to donate a, at least a dollar a month a minimum a dollar a month so that what we can do 
is to repatriate our people back to the continent of Africa and set them up in business. Help them uh, with housing, help them with a monthly stipend, provide seed capital for them to start their own business so that they can be free and independent and, and create something that their children and grandchildren can inherit on our continent. Because again, like I said, I am an advocate uh, I am a Garveyite. I am 100% uh, in favor uh, and support of children of Africa who have been displaced by way of the transatlantic slave, slave trade going back home. Because Elder Stevens, no matter where our people are, if you go down uh, to South America, Honduras, Colombia, Brazil, we are discriminated against to this day in the 21st century. We are abused. We are being killed. We are marginalized. We are suffering economic and social oppression. In Canada, same thing. In the UK, same thing. You know, uh, here in America, same thing. They're killing us. Uh, we are discriminated against what, in, what Neela, Neely Fuller uh, described as the nine areas of human activity. All nine areas of human activity, we are oppressed and discriminated against. So what my, for me, and, and you know, I told you, Elder, I'm an attorney by profession. So I, I, maybe by, maybe I was taught this way, but I don't think it's from law school. My mother always taught me from a small child when I'm going to school. If something don't make sense, question everything. Ask questions. Don't let them keep talking. Don't just believe everything. Don't follow everything. Ask questions. So I have that type of mentality where I start thinking, I'm like, why do we, why do we keep staying here? I, I don't understand. And I'm not trying to talk down on our, on our dear uh, departed uh, brother Martin Luther King. He did what he thought was best at the time, but I am convinced that integration was not the solution. Integration has been the worst thing that, that could have possibly happened to us because it's been down here for us ever since. You know what I mean? So I I believe the only solution, because like you, I don't think these people will ever voluntarily give up power or concede power to make us equals or allow us to be equal with them. It's going to be one thing after the other. It's like, you know, that game where they move the, they put a ball under a cup and they move it around and we chasing the ball, chasing it, and they keep moving. And they keep moving it. And then they put it in and they keep moving it. And we chasing, 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 looking for something that, it, it, it's an illusion. It's a game they playing with us. And I'm saying stop playing. Stop participating in this game. Quit. Throw in the towel and go home. That, you know, we <laughs> that's my answer. That's my solution. And to me, that's the logical solution based on all the historical evidence and all the the current um Things that I see going on, we still dealing with voter suppression, Elder Stevens. Here I am with a 30-year-old son. My mother and my father were out. My grandparents uh, grew up in Jim Crow, Mississippi. My mother and father were out there marching with Martin Luther King as teenagers. My mother grew up in Mississippi and my father with segregated uh, water fountains and restaurants in Mississippi. Okay? And, and my father... Uh, was drafted to go fight in a war in Vietnam. They had nothing to do with him as a black man because Vietnamese ain't never did nothing. Else, and he's still suffering to this day from injuries that he, you know, uh, had that happened to him from there. And to this day, his own grandchildren are still being, their votes are being suppressed. So how, what, what have we gained? <laughs> what have we gained? You, you understand what I'm saying? So, it, it, you know, they have that saying like, you keep doing the same thing over and over and over, and you and and you expecting a dis, different result. That's but it, it's like the definition of insanity, and it's like what is wrong with us? We keep marching, begging, trying to make these people accept that we are equal human beings, and they're never going to do it. They're never going to do it, not voluntarily. That's my position. So I don't have the. I don't want to waste another. A minute of my life with these people arguing with them begging i have grandchildren now i'm a grandmother so how long have, and now my my grandchildren are growing up in a world where black people are being 
marginalized. They're being abused. You know, they're being discriminated against. They're being shot down in the streets. The same thing that my my parents, that her great grandparents were dealing with, her great grandparents were doing. So at some point, you got to say, you know what? Throw in the towel. This ain't working. You know what? <laughs> These people are not going to change. That's that's my position. So I say, let's go home. Let's go home. Let's go home. But unfortunately, you have some people that. You know, they want to stay. So, Elder Stevens, for those who want to stay, what do you tell us about your program? Well, what 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 we what we do is that we try to organize people to be independent so that we don't have to be flushed out and uh, we make our own clothes. We have a factory that we make uh, our clothing. And we want to take this industry to Africa, take all of it. And uh, 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 one of my uh, uh, ladies that works diligently with me, that she was talking talking to me this morning about uh, the uh, clothing that she saw that was coming out of Africa and how we can take that clothing and the designs and stuff. I said, well, all the designs and the stuff that's actually coming out of Africa was made by black folks. That little stuff that we have, that, that we have to display today in America. So we want to take the industry that we have adopted and take it back to, take it back to uh, America because it belongs to us. And we were talking about the summit that we're going to be having, in which we have every year. We have a summit to teach as many people as we can get to come to the summit, what we're doing, how we're doing it, so that they too can be uplifted. And because you can still make some money here, but you have to have a plan to get to get the money. You just can't just walk up and pick it up because uh, getting making a, a loan is not getting it's not helping you any. I have I haven't made a loan in America since 1988. Wow. I have not bought any money. It's just 1988. And my old piece of car, just about as nice as anybody else's. I would say that if you saw it, I'm not going to tell you what it is. But, <laughs> if you, <laughs> but if you saw it, you would say, how did he manage to, to uh, manage to buy a car like that and uh, not borrow any money? Because I worked hard and I picked cotton, I chopped cotton, I did everything I needed to do. To uh, produce the money and the stuff that I use on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So, give it up and give it back to Sister Yo. And Sister Yo, you are a person, and, uh, and any of your, and any of the people that you uh, uh, or talk to, if they want to be a part of what we're doing, welcome. They are welcome to come on and join your party and my party, so that our two parties we can lift them out of our bondage. And so, how do people reach you? Okay, tell us again the name of the organization so I can put it here. And you're out of Chicago, Illinois. Uh, what's the name of the organization again, Elder Stevens? The name of the organization is Infinity Building. Economics, Black Political Action Committees. Black Political Action Committees. Action committees. If you're not doing some action, you ain't. You're not even serving your committee. Right. You have to be a person of decision making. All we, right. We love everybody in our organization have something to say and some decisions to make so that we can get away from all of this depression. 
And and Elder Elder Stevens, how are they uh, able to reach? Who whose number can they call so if they want to get involved? They can call my number direct, and my number seven seven three five seven seven. Okay, let me repeat. 773-577. What's the last four? 9656. Elder Stevens. Now, Elder Stevens, we have uh, someone, uh, Shay, is asking, will the summit be streamed live so that those people who can't physically attend be able to still participate? Yes, now that we have this young lady here today with us, she's going to be streaming it live for the first time oh. that we've been able to do that. And uh, well, we are working on the system. Hopefully, we can stream it into Africa itself. Oh, well, wow. we're working with you to see how we can actually make that happen because we want to stream it all over the world. Beautiful, beautiful. And, and uh, L. Stevens, when's the date for the summit? The date for the summit is um, October 1st. October 1st. October. Okay. All right. Everybody, y'all got that? I got I, it's Infinity Building Economics, Black Political Action Committees. I've given you uh, Elder Stevens' phone number. So you all have that. He said in that 773 577 9656. You can contact him directly. Uh, to get that information now, Elder Stephen, now why at age eighty one? Why at age that are you not enjoying your retirement? Why are you still doing this work? Because I will not quit until my people are free. I say, I say, I say. All right, that's what I'm talking about. I feel the exact same way. Thank you. I I, I already knew what you're gonna say. I, you didn't know I was gonna ask that question, but I already knew what you're gonna say. Cause I have the same philosophy. We can't quit. We can't stop. You know, we can't. No, no. We absolutely cannot. I'm, okay, I'm, I'm my, my fifth generation. How can I quit? And I got all of these great, great, great grandkids that I have been charged with. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm only, like I told you, I got I got children and I got grandchildren. I don't have great grands. My grands are still babies right now, but I know exactly what you're saying. I do what I do, uh, not just for me. It's not about what's, what about, I'm trying to create a, a you know, you got to look generations ahead. What do you want? What world do you want to leave for your your progeny, for your descendants? And 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 I look and going back to what I said, I see that we are living the same, basically same thing that when what, what was happening when Martin Luther King was here. So we got to do something different. We we have to. We can't continue this cycle of just repeating the same mistakes over and over and over again. And we've given up too much of our sovereignty, too much of our independence uh, to these people who who have proven already that they uh, don't like us and they don't mean us any good. So uh, if, does anybody have any questions for our elder? Uh, before we wrap it up, I'm going to let him give him a, a moment to, to give y'all some closing words of encouragement and uh, some instructions, some marching orders from my elder. So uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask them now. I can tell y'all right now, uh, Elder Stevens told me he come to Africa with me. So <laughs> I can't. have you been to Africa yet, Elder Stevens? 
No, I haven't, but, but I have. Uh, I don't have to tell you this. I have a young lady that's uh, in Africa. She came to Chicago to several of our, of our summits, and uh, she's a part of our organization, and she's in Africa, and we say that she runs the grants that we operate out of Africa. And we also have a lady that we call, what's her Queen name? Esther. Queen Esther mm -hmm. out of Jamaica. Okay. And she runs a Jamaica out of Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So when you come on, the show on, uh, on uh, uh, come on our show, you will hear uh, her uh, speaking about what she does in Jamaica. Okay. We are we're trying to find a connection to where we can com communicate with uh, our queen, our, our queen in uh, in Africa, mm -hmm. and uh, we're getting connected to her again so that we can stream the information that you just asked about mm -hmm. to Africa. All right. Because there got to be a way to where we can talk to each other across the world. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So, uh, Elder, I'm going to uh, give you a minute. I'm going to give you the screen and I want you to talk to these people, talk to your people and leave them with whatever message you want them to hear uh, before we close out for today. All right. Well, here's what I here's what I have to say. If they're not joining you. Leave them alone. Don't try to take them to Africa because they'll mess up Africa like they did America. We know who we know who they are. We have dealt with them for hundreds of years. So I want everybody to get on board, and you will hear our uh, uh, Alzora playing a record about get on board. This train is coming because this train has left the station and this train now has some picked up speed because we met you. So you just gave us some, some uh, more fuel to fuel this train to get it going a little bit faster. And I want to support you in doing the same thing over and over again. Because if we did 500 years of stuff over and over again, I know that you can do what we are asking you over again and see how you fare when it's completed. Because what you have done has not been completed. And what little good you got out of it, look at all the people that we have lost over the years. And you know this pandemic or whatever this stuff is that they are planted and how we have suffered from it here in America is is man-made. So I say stay at home the best you can. Keep your nose wrapped up the best you can so that you don't die from the what's the name of that poison that they planted on us? What? Coronavirus. 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 All right. You know that stuff is man-made because the the guy that was running that's running for president wanted to kill off as many people as he could. So please follow follow the lead person that brought you onto this call and tell everybody that's in your circle to get on board because the train is leaving the station so that you can get on board and be wealthy, rich, and be a fifth generation. I ain't gonna tell you to be a sixth generation because that's where I'm going. Be a fifth generation where you can catch up with me. So thank you so much. And I look I'll, I'll talk to you maybe on a daily basis if all possible. All right. I'm here. You got my, you got my number. Yeah. You got my number. Thank you so much.
Thank you. Thank for, you for, and thank you for coming to America so we could meet you. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm, go, I'm trying to get out of here and get back there. Uh, he told me the other day, I said, uh, I got stuff over here, and I got to get back to Africa. He said, well, we glad you came back. What do you think the rest of the world is with you? <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying, Elder. I'm trying to stay. I'm trying. Well, we needed some encouragement in America because we were running around in circles, honey. Yeah, it's gonna be all right. I'm, I'm positive. I really am positive. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time this afternoon, and we will welcome you back anytime you want to come on and talk to the people. You just let me know, and I will Well, I hated I hated to blunder, but at such short notice, and I was so excited, I, I had a mouthful of blunder to bring to the show. No, you did no, one. They hear you. They hear you. They hear you. All right. All right. Thank All right. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Good evening. Bye bye. Well, and there y'all have it. So, uh, Elder Stevens, uh, like I said, I, I met this wonderful man just two days ago. I got, uh, he watched a video of me uh, and watched that interview and he just, he said he had to talk to me. And so from there, now I have a new friend, a new mentor to add into my arsenal of mentors. Uh, and uh, man, I look forward to building a, a stronger relationship with this elder. But uh, thank you all for joining us. It was kind of short notice. I just wanted to get him on and have him talk to you all. Uh, because like, you know, I, me, yeah, I respect our elders. You know, the ones that, that, that got some good sense. Because we got, we, there's two groups of old people. There's elders and there's olders. Some, just being old don't make you an elder. <laughs> a lot of people get mad when I say that, but it's the truth. Because you got a lot of people who are up in age who are complete idiots. They lived on this planet for decades upon decades upon decades, and they just don't get it, and they're going to go out and uh, they without getting it, you know. But this elder gets it, and uh, I just uh, I'm honored to, to sit at his feet and listen and learn uh, and see what he has to teach me and to work with him and see what we can do for our people because, again, everybody's not going to go. Some people just, you know, they're completely... They want to stay here, and what can we do? But we want them to be safe if they're going to stay. We we don't want to go to Africa and be like, oh, well, you all stay or whatever happens to you happen. No, we don't want that. We still want to, the best outcome possible for those who choose to stay. That's what we want for our people because we love our people, regardless if they want to go back to Africa or not. So with that being said, thank you all for jumping in on such a short notice. Y'all know I love you. And um, I'll be back soon. I'll, you know, I'm working on lining up some more shows and everything. So y'all take it easy. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Peace and black power. Uh, Shay, uh, Sister Shay, uh, I got your email. So make sure you text me. Uh, wait, and then the, uh, there was somebody else that asked me. He said he was, hold on. Um... So Shay, you got my number. You can just call me or text me, hit me up, and then uh, I'll talk to you. But there was somebody asked how to get in touch with me. Okay, Cayman Islands, Wayne Mc McCarkle. Uh, Wayne, send me an email at admin at sankoferepat.com. Let me put that up here. Okay, Brother Wayne, I'm putting my email address up there. Hit me up, Wayne. 
and uh, just remind me that you were on the live stream and from the Cayman Islands. And then I'll, I'll reach out to you and give you, you know, a number where we can talk because I know you're probably going to, it's going to be an international call. Okay. Um, somebody said, Justice said, is it true that hundreds of African Americans are stranded in Ghana? It's very, I know some people who are stranded in Ghana. Uh, but you know what? I know I said I was getting ready to go, but let me tell you another situation that a lot of people don't even recognize is happening, and it's horrible. There are people uh, I know Ghanaians. I'm going. Uh, it's probably not just Ghana, but there are Ghanaians who have dual citizenship or residency here in the United States. They have jobs. They had jobs, uh, apartments, bills cars, some family, some people are over there and their kids were here. They went to Ghana on vacation and then the borders closed and these people can't get back. And it's terrible because they don't know, they don't have any idea what's happening to their things here in the United States. Uh, their cars, their apartment, it's a mess. This whole thing, guys, I th you know, a lot of times I think we don't even think about the whole big picture, how people are being affected, how screwed up things are. There's a lot of people that are screwed up behind this thing, man. A lot of people. Uh, my husband and I know some Ghanaians who live here, who work here, who have stuff going on here. Property, everything. You know, like they've got job, they were working, and 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 then it's like for months they haven't been. They don't know what's going on with their stuff. You know, it's sad. It's terrible. It, it's similar to me to how um, we focus so much on ourselves. You know, we talk uh, so much as as descendants of kidnapped and enslaved Africans about what we went through what we went through and and you know we we went to the continental africans they don't know what we were in to a degree they don't know what we went through but you know what we also don't know what they went through because they went through a lot they went through a lot and and I am guilty of that myself and not looking at things from their perspective and how they how the slave trade literally affected them and how families are still to this day uh mourning and dealing with this the the theft and separation and loss of loved ones and family members and you know uh you know how their communities were decimated and destroyed and you know and havoc was was wreaked on the continent of Africa, but we don't we don't think about that. We think about oh well, you know, what happened to us? You know, y'all don't know what happened to us, but this is why it's important. And then we don't think about our brothers and sisters. You know, even now, what everything that's happening to us in the United States as as a people, but we don't even think about what's happening to our brothers and sisters down in in Brazil. They are catching pure hell. In Colombia, I mean, it's like, man, no matter where we are, we catch it, you know. And this, 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 this thing, you know, like the elder said, they made it, they created it. It's something they just, and now we are the ones suffering more than anybody as a result of it. It's just awful, you know. It's really, really awful. Um, and, and uh. You know, I know I kind of went off on a tangent. Shay said that people all over the world are stranded. This situation has caused lots of travel stoppage. Not just African Americans or African nations. Thousands are stranded. Not just in Ghana. See, it, it's it's a mess. It's happening. It's terrible. Um, and we have to do uh, what the elder told us is we got to find a way to support each other, connect with each other um, financially, economically, because that's the only way we're going to make it through this thing. You know, not just here in America, but we got to get some connections internationally with brothers and sisters in other parts of the world. We 
are in a mess as a people. We are in a mess. And this COVID-19 nonsense just made it worse. I'm sitting here every day trying to figure out how I'm going to, you know, what route I'm going to do, how I'm going to get to Ghana. And I had, I talked to a brother, because y'all know I did that show with African Superstar, and I was talking about, okay, if I get to this country, and then I can make my way through ground, get to Ghana. And I had one of my Ghanaian fr- friend, brother friends tell me, he was like, sister, they not letting nobody in in Ghana. Even on the ground, they not letting people in. It's like, and if you, if you get in, if you sneak in, they find out. They are putting people in jail because they've only in Ghana had, a, you know, a hundred and some deaths from COVID. And so they're very serious about this border thing. So I'm trying to figure out how how am I really going to get there? You know, because I didn't want to hear that. So but I, I just had a conversation with my husband. I said, OK, that's true. If I just can't get into Ghana, say I can't say there's no way I can get into Ghana for a while. See, because he was telling me he don't, my friend in Ghana was saying he don't think the borders are going to open up till later this year, probably next year for people to go in. I'm not sitting over here that long. I'm telling y'all straight up. I'll just, and I, and I had this conversation with my husband. I said, I'll just go to another African country and wait it out. If I have to go to, to Senegal where RJ is, if I got to go to Sierra Leone where um, uh, my brother Fode and his wife is, you know, Basani. I'll go over there and wait it out. I won't wait it out over here. I'm not going to wait it out over here. I'm going to wait it out over there. And then from there, I'll move. You know what I'm saying? That's me. Um, but we, we, we all need each other. Now, let's see. Kamisha, Kamisha here. Kamisha said, if we didn't know it before, we should know by now. All we have is each other. We better come together. Absolutely, Kamisha. That's it. You said it all right there. You said it all. You're right, sister. Um, we got to... It's messed up, fam. It's messed up. So with that being said, we got a lot to talk about. I mean, we got a lot. We're going to keep coming back. We're going to we're gonna, we're gonna hash this thing out together. Uh, we're going to figure out something, how we're going to get out of here. You know, I know plenty of y'all contacting me every day. Y'all ready. Y'all got passports. Y'all got y'all money. Y'all saying, sister, y'all, we can't wait on St. Cole for repatriation of sister program. We, we try to get out of here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so we're going to have to uh, come together and figure out a plan. All of us, you know, let's we it's, it's we got to do some Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad type shit. <laughs> we got to get out of here. You okay? So I'm not gonna be stuck over here. I don't care what nobody. I'm not. I refuse. I'm leaving. Okay. So you know, the like-minded people, all of us get together. We figure out a route and figure out where we go on Africa to to hold out until we can get where we are trying to go. You understand? That's that's the only thing I can come up with, guys. Y'all let me know what y'all think about it. All right. All right. I'm going to go ahead and let y'all go. I love y'all. Thanks for showing up on short, short notice. And y'all take it easy. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. See, y'all keep coming. Every time I try to close out, somebody come. Gary said, what about chartering a ship? Gary, you can charter a ship, but you still got to go through the borders. <laughs> I mean, once you get off the ship, you still got to go through immigration. Still got to go through, you, you know, the ship. The ship is not the, oh, John, John said, uh, you're our Harriet sister. Job. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Harriet, Harry got some big shoes to fill now. I don't know. Uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to live up to that because people keep, keep uh, you know, making that comparison. I'm trying. Uh, but those are some really big shoes to to feel because you know ain't too many people like mama harriet mama harriet was a uh straight up warrior man she was not playing with it um shay said there are cargo ships for under five hundred thousand. i'm just waiting for folks who are ready to contribute but shay we get the cargo ship we got to talk about it. let's talk about the cargo ship situation i shay let me give i don't want to give shay my shay are you ready to come on here since y'all want to talk, y'all want to talk this thing out, let's hash it out. Shay, 
are you ready to come on here and talk about this cargo ship thing? Are y'all y'all do, let me know. Put it in here. I'm gonna give you the link. I'm gonna text you the link. You come on. Let's talk about because a lot of people have brought this thing up about a cargo ship. Who gonna who gonna sell the ship first? That's what I want to. Who gonna sell? Yeah, we don't want to be around in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean going around in in circles. You know, hurricane season coming up. Uh. Who going who going to sell the ship? Who going to be the crew? You know, who knows how to maintain the ship? All of that type of stuff. You know, that's some real Marcus Garvey type of stuff, but we got to we got to get the crew together. Who's ready to come on? Anybody want to come on and have a conversation? I'm I'm ready to bring you on. I'll give you the link. You can come on in here. Matter of fact, I'm just going to put the link right here. If you got something you want to say, Jump on in. Here it is. I'm going to give you all opportunity. If you got something you want to add to the discussion, come on. Come on, because we need solutions. And sister, y'all don't ever pretend like she know all the answers. So if you if you, if you you got some suggestions and you want to come on and talk, come on. Come on in. So, so y'all say... Uh, uh, there's she she said there's some cargo ships for five hundred thousand. Well, you know, I'm a little bit uh I don't know. I'm not comfortable with getting on no ship. <laughs> I'm not gonna even lie. Okay, here goes Shay. Let's 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 get our sister on this and let's talk about this cargo ship situation. Sister Shay, come on, girl. <laughs> Hey, how are you? I'm fine. How are you doing, my dear? <laughs> I'm how good. Are you, my dear? Good, good. I'm good. Um, I'm stuck in Philly. How you stuck in Philly? I'm stuck in Philly. Um, um I'm I'm making my move to Ghana by um some special means. So, uh. My company has me here, and um, I'm waiting till my next my next destination, and then okay. my next destination should be the continent, and then waiting on Ghana. So um, that's why I'm stuck in Philly. But um, oh. as far as the ship, yeah, I know that we, you know, it's going to be a lot of logistics to get a ship, you know, together. There, like you said, there's going to be the captain. There's going to be, you know, uh, how do we do the maritime stuff? But I mean it has to start somewhere, you know what I mean? And I've just been looking at the different ships and, and they're not as, they're not as expensive or as out of reach as people think they are. And that's the only reason why I keep bringing it to the table. Cause some people are like, Oh, a ship is going to be a billion dollars. <laughs> Nobody has a billion dollars, you know, Marcus Garvey made it happen and he was 30 something. I'm already 40. So, I mean, our, our minds have to be in this game, you know? Mhm. Well, you're right now. So what 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 do we do? We we get let's talk it out. So we get the ship. We 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 go out. Well, first before we buy a ship, shouldn't we even put our feelings out there for who who we're going to staff it with? Who has the skills? Yes, I, I agree with that. Um, there's a couple of there's a couple of um, yachting um, um, clubs, black yachting clubs in, in the U.S. And I think some of them are retired Navy. Some of them are retired, you know, doing whatever they did, you know, whether it's um, cargo ships or other maritime ships. I mean, they would be they would be the pools that we need to talk to about about getting that staff, you know, because they're already on the seas. So okay. it. You know that I think that would be a good place to start as far as uh, getting, you know, um, a crew together, starting with those yachting and those boating clubs, and seeing who who's interested. If not in, I mean, it'll just be for for the time that that we need somebody to move move back and forth, not even to be, you know, permanently part of 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 the mission, but just hey, we need to pay for you to do a six month with us, you know, six months travel with us you know 
Mm -hmm. And so, and then we we just get a um, so we got it. We got you know I don't know how long it takes a ship to make it across from you know from here because you're going against the trade winds. The trade winds blow from Africa this way. This is why you get the dust from Africa coming this way. This is why the hurricanes go from Africa to this way. So you're you're gonna and I know that cargo ships do it because we ship goods and things to Africa. You know what I mean? So I, I, and then I, I assume that it's possible to. It, it has to be possible because the ships think, go that way. Huh? I think it's um. I think it's six at most it's eight weeks but i mean it could be four to six weeks N normally that's how like when you're shipping stuff yeah mm -hmm. yeah i'm um, on 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 water it's like four weeks six weeks they give you six weeks um even shipping f from further coming from um you know like japan and stuff because i have looked at you know my personal things um getting a vehicle from japan to the states and I don't know. Well, that was, you know, over the Pacific. So that will be it's, it's about the same amount of distance, I think, though. Um, but four to, to eight weeks, you know, time, mm -hmm. I would say. But I think we could start with um, looking at those those yachting groups and those boating groups that are um, that are Afrocentric or black centric. There's a mm -hmm. couple of them out there. But, right. I mean, so, as usual, as usual, it, ta it takes the money, you know, it, you know, yeah. great ideas are great. But then, you know, how many people are actually literally going to contribute to the funding? And I'm know? a living testimony to that after from November 19 up until as I'm sitting here with you today, we haven't even raised a whole ten thousand dollars. So mm -hmm. you have, everybody, you know, a thousand thousands of emails, people saying, help me, help me. Even the people that are saying "help me, help me" have not donated. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> one do, one dollar, one dollar. So I yeah. mean, it's twelve twelve dollars. You know what I mean for the year? Twelve dollars, and people spend more. You know, on a pack of toilet tissue. You know what I mean? Or you know, people spend more money on simple stuff like three gallons of milk is twelve dollars. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, I, and I, I, I'm not know, gonna five put packs of I don't want to put her on the spot, but this is our biggest donor here. She do not play. When she come with the donor, she come with it. She come all the way from all the way here. All the way. <laughs> she come with that money. This is our biggest donor my right thing is, My thing is like, I, I'm one of those people, I don't always have money. So when mm -hmm. I have it, when I have access to it, you know, you always put stuff off. You always procrastinate. You always say, oh, I'll do it. I'll contribute. I'll do it. But, you know, when you get that money and, and you say that you're going to do something, do it so that you can forget about it and it's already done. So, mm -hmm. like, when, when I said, oh, I'm going to, um, you know, support Sankofa Repat, I'm like, let me go ahead and put this money down while I got it so I can get out the way. I'm not going to be in debt to anybody or whatever. Let me go ahead and pay, you know what I mean, up front. So I can forget about it. I know it's already done. You, you, have, paid for the, you have paid for ye years. And when I say years, I ain't, I ain't talking about one year, two years. He's paid for years, probably about 30, 40, 50 years, <laughs> if not more. She comes with it. God, she, she puts her money where his mouth is. So I, she's genuine in supporting what we're trying to do. And I love you and I thank you for it. Um, uh, you're, the, you're the one doing the work, you know what I mean? And I figure I'm if I'm... If I'm too lazy to do the work, if I if I don't have the know-how, because I don't have no lawyer's license, I don't know how to, you know, I'm not trying to read all those books and all those documents and do, I'm not doing it. So why not give you twelve dollars? You know mm -hmm. what I mean, sister? Y'all, can you read through all of this red tape for me, please? Here's my twelve dollars. Do all the legwork for me, please. Here's my twelve dollars. I mean, I mean, that's not much to ask. That is not much to ask because I, you know, I don't have, I'm a techie. I do tech stuff. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Pay me for the tech stuff, but I'm going to pay somebody else to do, to do the legwork for areas that I'm not familiar with. And, and I, I appreciate everything that you're doing. And, and, you know, like I said, I have it. So, so I'm able to contribute and I, and I, and I appreciate everything that you're doing, the time that you're putting into all of this, the work that you're putting into all of it, all the connections that you're making that, you know, we, we, don't have the time to make or that we don't have the, you know, the ability to make. So I, I'm just 
giving giving you what I can to show you the appreciation and to pay for your time and efforts. Thank you. We appreciate it, sister. Thank you so much. Um, Brother Kofi said, when are you going to mainstream black media talk radio? And when I'm invited, brother, when I'm invited to go there, I will do it. So that's when. So uh, Daisy, we want to bring this sister on. Daisy, are you there? Yeah. Uh, uh, you you going? Going <laughs> Daisy, you there? Hello, hello. Hello, my dear. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Good. Good to see. You. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm, I I was just wanting to listen in and kind of get a close up what you guys are doing. Oh, I okay. You know, I kind of been following a little bit for some time, but I came in here late. Oh, okay. Okay. We were all just having a discussion about uh, a route to get to Africa to get our people home. How do we get our people home? I'm even thinking, Shay, what do y'all think about, and we're just tossing some stuff out of here. Mm -hmm. What about groups of people who are serious coming together in small, unclaimed, small groups and pooling resources together <laughs> and acquiring, um, you know, maybe putting their money together to get a housing situation, a compound, putting their money together um, for uh, business, you know, uh, because if, if, if it's going to take everybody forever to, to donate to the Exodus Alliance and Sankofa Repatriation Assistance Program, I would rather people come together of like minds and in small groups and say, okay, let's five families get together and put our money together and let's go. You know what I'm saying? That's something mm -hmm. rather than nothing. What do you think about that? I think that's an awesome idea. Um, I actually was trying to partner up with um, a couple of families in my area um, in a susu and uh, in order to do something like that, that fell through. So there's a number of things that keeps prohibiting people. And, and a lot of it, as far as the susu was concerned, it wasn't a real susu. You know, it was, it was, it was kind of a pyramid almost. So um, that's, that was, I think, why that didn't really work out. But those are, I think that's a good idea if people can be serious and, you know, just steadily put their resources together. Right now, I have a huge family. So I have eight people in my household. So it's, it's you know, it's a challenge trying to do it by yourself, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah. What, you want to add something to that, Shay? Did she freeze up? I think it's a good idea as well. Um, yes. Oh no. Um, we have to get out of the the independent mindset. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we have to get back to unity um, yeah. um, aspect. Because a lot of us are, 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 are trying to make this move, but we have in our mind, you know, I want my land, I want my house, I want this, you know, but it's so much easier when you work together, when you when you deal with the issue, when when you take little pieces of the, of the cookie, you know what I mean? When you take little pieces of the cookie, if everybody takes a bite, you know what I mean? The cookie gets eaten much faster, but everybody's mm -hmm. like, oh, I want mine, I want mine, I want mine, I want mine, and and it, it, it slows the process down and they don't realize that they're slowing their own process down. So yeah. I think that, you know, um, collective living is a good idea. I, there I, I is, there, add, there, oh, go ahead, sister. I'm sorry. I, I also want to add to that. I think a lot of it is, is that distrust piece that happened mm -hmm. um, with us. And uh, what ends up happening is you have people who say, well, if I give to this thing, you know, what's the guarantee? And, and and to be perfectly honest there, you know, if you give to a a group, there's really never going to be a guarantee, you know, and a lot of times we kind of hold ourselves, we hold one another to that high bar where we need guarantees and all these kind of things, you know, and, and I understand because we're working from a, a space of lack, a lot of us, you know, who are trying to get back, you know, a lot of us, like I heard um, on somebody else's broadcast, um, earlier that they were saying, you know, you need at least twenty thousand, thirty thousand dollars saved up in order to go and be okay. 
you know, a lot of us don't have that. So we're going to have to find more creative means to do it. But if we're working from a space of lack, you know, then we're going to be, you know, in, you know, in a situation where we're not really trusting um, the process. We're, you know, we're going to be hesitant, more hesitant to give because we're still like, I'm not sure, yeah. you know, what, you know, what are you going to do with the money? You know, cause I, I need this money. Yeah. Well, see, and that's the reason why I said Sankofa at as low as a bar as I can come. Because I'm like, a dollar a month? Surely a million of us can come up with a dollar a month. You know what I mean? This is this was my thinking. Like, surely, surely we got a dollar a month. It, even if the poorest of us, a, a homeless person can come up with a one, four quarters every month. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I said, let's Listen, we're not going to get out of this situation uh, unless you're already independently wealthy, which most of us are not. The vast majority of us are not. We have to practice group economics. We have to work. We have to. It's Kuji Kat. Was it Kuji Kat? Pronounce it for me. Kuji Kat. Kuji Chagalia. Kuji Chagalia. You know. So we have to do this thing together to lift each other up. We have to. We have to. You know what I'm saying? But you're right. A lot of us have this idea. Well, I don't care about anybody outside of my family. You're just going to be me and my kids, my husband, my wife. I don't care. You know what I mean? And and that's, 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 and then so doing it like that, we all die. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So if we do it the other way, we all survive and we all thrive. Welcome, sister. The other thing Success that we don't we don't realize. Well, go ahead, sis. Go ahead. I'm sorry, but I was going to say, ahead. like, um, like she was mentioning about um, people who are who are fearful of 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 trusting, and we don't have the money. But people don't rec people don't acknowledge that every month that you have your money in a bank account. Every month that you have your money tied up in a loan or a car, your even your cell phones, your cell phone bill. If you look at your cell phone bill and look at how many fees are on your cell phone bill, you're giving away a dollar a month to multiple different resources that you don't question. You don't even think about it. And it's not for your benefit. Right. A dollar because you look at your bank account there's multiple fees if you call your bank instead of instead of going online for your bank charge you a fee call your cell phone company your cell phone company charge you a fee so there's multiple times giving away money giving away yeah. money you know what i mean yeah. and they're not conscious they're not conscious of how they can save themselves yeah. So I'll just say yeah. that. And um you you're getting more people on the screen so I I'll, I'll um go away <laughs> and I'll listen. <laughs> All right, let's let's let Success Nation. Thank you for joining us, sister. You are you leaving, Shay? All right. Thank you yes. so much. All right, sister. Thank you. We appreciate you. Let's talk some more about that ship. Some people are interested in that ship idea. I'm the I'm scared to be on the water that long. That's my problem. I'd rather get on the plane and be in Africa eight hours to be on the water in the middle of the ocean for, for six to eight weeks. That could be the spirit of my ancestors who were brought over here. You know, just uh, maybe I'm just feeling like, Ugh. you know, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But I'm not feeling being on that water that long. I swear to God, I'm not. What's up, Sister Success Nation? How you doing? I am well. I am well. How are you? Fine, sis. Fine. Thanks for joining. What do you want to contribute to this discussion? You know what? I, I pretty much agree with what everybody's saying or what you're saying. Like, we have to do it together as a team. Um, this is not a, we have to literally be the village at this point, you know, because we have been so accustomed to being individuals. And this is time that we cannot be. Like the sister was saying, she have, she's a family of what, eight, right? And imagine, I'm a family of five. So it's like, it's tough when we're trying to do this thing, one family, per, it, it, it's just not going to work. But collectively, we can come together and we can come up with a plan, you know, to be able to do it because 
if somebody paid fifty dollars, another person paid fifty dollars, that's something that we can collectively of a group of people, a group of hundred, we can move mountain that way compared to trying to do this thing alone. Because we all have the same narrative. We want to get out of here. Yeah. We, we know we want to go, but we don't have the finances that will be able to, you know, uh, pay for eight people on the plane or five people on the plane, you know, because that's a lot of money. I calculated my household if it's cheaper or not, but I came up with six thousand dollars, you know, yep. just, yeah. you know what I mean? That's so it's right. like, oh, my God, that's a lot of money already. And yeah. so you're talking about you pay that six thousand. Then you got to go there. Then you got to, you know, think about your expenses. You got to, you know, you got to live, you got to eat. You got to, you know, if you're trying to establish businesses and all the different things. And so it just, it would be best for us to come together and start to stop talking and start acting on it. Um, there's a brother, I think his name is Brendan. He created a plan called Our African Plan. And mm-hmm. so what he said it is, it's a plan that um, you pay $25 a month. Um, I think over a year of uh, a total of two, two years, he says. And so what his plan is, is to purchase the land and purchase the land. And then they're going to build on that land for the diaspora who are coming back. So everybody who is a part of it, you are pretty much building a community for you, your children. They're going to buy the big old piece of land and they're going to build houses on that land. It's all going to be like, you know, a community, what we're talking about right now. And I thought that was a great idea because it's like, I can't afford to pay maybe $1,500 for land. You know, I can't afford to... I, I barely can afford the plane ticket, let alone talking about lane, let alone talk about expensive food, you know, all these different accommodations. So it's like being a part of a team like that or being a part of any kind of group right now, we need to start grouping together. Group yeah. together, group together, talk with each other, get each, each other information. Because so we come on this platform, I mean, I, I love your show. I watch it all the time. And thank I you. think you're doing such a great job, you know, because you. Uh, we got to get our people out of here. We can't yeah. stay here and keep marching in the streets while they're shooting us in the back. And it's like, I'm literally, <laughs> I'm yeah. originally actually from the continent. I mean, I, if you can hear my accent. Mm-hmm. And so, but it's like, even though I'm from the continent, right? And my husband is from here. Mm-hmm. And so I want to make sure that, you know, he's now he's on board with, you know, repatriating and all that stuff. But now it's like I want him to be comfortable, you know. So if we're in a group of people where he got his people there, you know what I mean? Because even though right. I'm from Africa and he's from here, but sometimes you connect more with people who are more like you. Mm-hmm. People who speak more like you. People who, you know. Um, so for that very reason, I want I want him to be a part of the whole thing and he's willing, he's on board with it. But I want to be a part of a community, a part of a group of people, you know, so that way he can feel at home. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Guys, we know the answer. We know the answer. It's just convincing our people to work together. Cause we got you a bunch of, I, lie, I ain't gonna lie. I love black people. Y'all know what I do, but some of y'all got some weird ass personalities. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard, y'all. Some people make it hard, you know what I mean, to to deal with them. And we, I, but I don't know how we're gonna get over there. You know, every, the people quirky, they got their way of doing. Some people super anal. I, listen, I, I know as see what y'all see. I'm telling y'all what y'all see is what. Well, this is how I am in real life. I like to laugh. I have to I like to have a good time. Y'all see me in Ghana. I'm probably gonna be somewhere at a bar drinking some 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 Ghanaian beer and eating some guinea fowl and and laughing. Oh, and you, you understand? Yes, me. I go to the village. I drink palma. I'm laughing. I'm loud. I'm from Mississippi. I'm with well, my family. We we get together. We play spades. We laugh. You know, I'm just a very uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm a I'm an open person. So. I don't I don't have to know you from anywhere and I will be I'm okay. But some people are standoffish. Oh, standoffish, they act like you can't talk. Me, but see, my personality don't fit well with some people. I'm I'm gonna be I'm loud, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna and I'm not gonna pretend to be something I'm not. I'm gonna drink. I'm telling you right now, I'm gonna drink. I drink. You understand? What I'm and I'm not going to tell y'all any lie about that. I drink, I'm drinking. I'm drinking a beer right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> what I'm saying? You need that to keep your energy up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. so, that's me. I'm going to keep 
it real with y'all. But I, I like to have fun. I'm optimistic. I'm, I, I don't dwell in negativity. I don't like drama. You know what I'm saying? Y'all come over here to my house. Y'all come anytime you come to my house. Me and my husband gonna be laughing. I don't do drama. I like to have fun. I like to laugh. My kids are little comedians. They always have me laughing. We laughing. We don't do nobody raising voice. Great. I don't do none of that. I'm not into any of that. Me, I, I'm going the other way. I'm a Libra. Y'all know Libra like balance. You know, I'm like I'm like chill. I'm always on chill. That's me. You know, I want to have a good time. I want to be happy. Some people are so damaged that you cannot be with them. You know what I mean? Because they like to dwell in misery. So how do we get these like-minded people together, these like personalities where it's not going to be a lot of drama? You know what I mean? Uh, I'm very trusting. If I, this sister that just came on here, Daisy, if Daisy says, sister, y'all, yeah, let's put our money together, do this. If it makes sense to me, I'll be like, okay, I'll just put my money, because I'm just going to trust her. You, you understand? She ain't did nothing to me to make me not trust her. Mm -hmm. So if she do something that make me not trust her, then from that point, I won't trust her anymore. But just out of the gate, I'm not looking at her like, she trying to get my money. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But a, a lot of our people are not like Sister Yah. So I don't know how to get our people over this, this thing that make us suspicious of each other, that make us not trust each other, mm -hmm. to make us envious of each other. You see somebody, you think this one got more than you. You know what I mean? And we all really, at the end of the day, in the same predicament. In the same boat, yeah. <laughs> you understand? How do we get past this psychological thing that makes us have this this stuff with each other? Um, Can I speak on that a little bit? Yes, please. So I think that at this stage, we got to know what time it is. And I think um, enough of us really do know what a time what time it is, and so one part of that is that we it's not time to try and convince anybody anymore. It's really not time for that. You know, those of us who want to escape, to be perfectly yeah. honest, those of us who want to escape, we're going to come with different personalities, different baggage, but we all have still one goal, which is the thing that we can tie together, you know? Um, and then what a lot of people need, a lot of people who have that hesitant spirit about them, but they want to get out. It's mm -hmm. not, you know, I mentioned about distrust, but that's a part of that damage. And it's not really trying to convince anybody, but one of the things that we can do is lay out a plan. Cause a lot of people just need, okay, step one, step two, step three, step four, and they're good. If it mm -hmm. makes sense. You know, mm -hmm. like you mentioned, if it makes sense to them, you know, I'm kind of I've kind of over my life, I've kind of been the type of person who I've jumped into a lot of fires. You know, what I mean? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because because if you tell me something, I'm, I'm kind of that person, you know, my family called me gullible and all kind of stuff. You know, I well not now. It's look like once I hit 40, I started kind of getting a little more. Hesitant yeah, <laughs> on things. but um, but I've been that person who just jumps. You know, on the other hand, my husband is extremely hesitant. Yeah. Extremely hesitant. He wants to study a thing for four or five years. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're talking about. You know what? Because my husband is similar to that. Because he said, you, you, he said, you be a, I'm like, cuz, why not? You know what I mean? But he, he got to think about it. He got to look at all the possible <laughs> outcomes. And I'd be like, are you serious? Right. You're not going to know. You're not, not going to know You can do everything right and then the whole thing blow up. Exactly. You but, you know, you got to have a balance. And so those are the people who will kind of help give us balance and perspective and things like that. But as far as convincing somebody, it's not time for convincing anybody anymore. Right. You're right. That's my thinking. And and so as we as you know, as we move forward, because I definitely want to move forward with you. I've been I've been showing my husband, we've been we <laughs> I've been showing my husband what you're talking he, about. Uh, your husband over there eyeballing me. What's your husband's <laughs> name? What's your husband's name? 
His name is Yaman. He's he's actually not in the room. He's here's a there. here's a drink to your husband. Okay. <laughs> 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 Tell me, he keeps eyeballing me. Okay. That's all right. <laughs> but you know, if we if we come up with a step by step plan, you know, we say, okay, we're gonna get off. You know, we're gonna get offline and you know, deal with each other. You know, in in a close knit situation, and say, okay, this is what we're doing. Let's go ahead and set it up. One, two, three, <laughs> bam, bam, boom, and you know, and then we start doing something. You know, those I believe. I believe that those people <laughs> would be a little bit more apt if they can see a plan. You know yeah. what I think? I think if we get uh, some people over there and they see it, see our people, they like what's they what's, which which state is the Missouri to show me state. And this is why I really wanted to do, and I, I I ran this past RJ. I wanted, this is my idea. I'm going to share it with y'all. I ain't told it to a lot of people, but y'all my peeps. Y'all y'all my peeps, so I'm going to tell y'all the idea. And if you got an idea of uh, how to help me make this happen, I believe we can pull it off. If we can get enough resources where we can do a, a few families, some initial families, and, and we do it like almost like a reality show, we get them over there, we, 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 you know, provide everything that Sankofa is trying to do and we record and we every couple of days we come back with an update, you know, like a reality show. Cause you know, black people love a reality show and we follow them, their journey to the motherland. We document it. We put it on. They keep people coming back. They see, and they see what can happen. And I think, in something like that, we can really garner the support that we really need. But we need the money to do that. You know what I mean? Because I was thinking if we could do one family for Ghana, one family for Senegal, one family for for Gambia, and just document it and have it to be like every day, like update what they're going through, how they're adjusting, how they're, you know, and do it like a reality show. And we can call it, I don't know, something with Sankofa, you know, uh, uh, but but a reality show. And I think, you know, and it will break down some of, even for those who think they can't do it, they will become interested to see how these people after, you know, hundreds of years uh, in uh, the diaspora, now they're returning to Africa and reintegrating. And we document that experience and how Sankofa is providing that assistance and that support. That's my idea. I'm telling y'all, I mean, my people already know. I'm like, I really want to make this a show. And let me tell y'all the name of the show. Don't nobody go steal my idea. I'm planning to put it on the internet because if any of y'all steal my idea, I'm suing your ass. You know I'm a lawyer. Okay. Look, and it's yours. Right. (laughs) You announcing it today at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I'm trying to think. Am I going to tell y'all the name of the show? Maybe I keep that to myself. But let me just say this. So, uh, and then, wh- you know what I want to do? Oh, man. If I tell y'all, I got the whole thing in my head. Y'all don't know. I, but I'm trying to get this money to make it happen. Guys. So, anyway, a lot of y'all have a lot of um, uh, 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 say, oh, and Zinga says it's already copyrighted. It's already copyrighted? Are you sure? Just because I put it out here, it's copyrighted. Ain't nobody going to steal it. <laughs> <laughs> Josh will say get a patent first. <laughs> I don't think you can patent that. You can't patent that. <laughs> Look, I'm saying I'm a lawyer. I'm like, I don't think that one's going. You can't patent that. <laughs> but um, anyway, I'm going to tell y'all the name of the show. This is the name of the show. So if y'all see anybody else do it, y'all know they stole my shit, right? It's called, <laughs> it's called All Roads Lead Home. And then in subtitle will be the movement of a people. That's it. What y'all think? That shit tight, ain't it? That's, That's tight. tight, ain't it? I know it's tight. <laughs> That's deep. That's yeah. real good. That's yeah. real good. Yeah. All yeah. roads right. lead home. A mm-hmm. movement of a people. different places. Huh? That, huh? That, I like that because it's like all roads and you got three different 
And then you pick, not, they won't just all be from here. You pick a family from the U.S., you could pick one from the Caribbean or South America, you pick one from the U.K., and then they wow. go to these different countries and, and who, you know, and bring them back to the continent of Africa and document that. So that's my idea. Anybody that want to help me make it a reality, hit me up, man. That's the idea. That's Oh, the, you know, maybe, maybe um, potential contestants, maybe they have to pay a fee that can go toward the work to enter. I don't know. But but my goal, this is what I want. I wanted, I, I was, I, I, my thinking is if we can get that show, make that show a reality, we will get that money that we need to move more people. You know what I'm saying? We will have sponsors. We will have everything. So let's see what y'all think about that. Ooh, and Zinga says she's manifesting it for me. Thank you, mm. Zinga. Yes. Uh, Katrina says a great idea. I said I was going to start as soon as I'm packing and leaving for America, step by step. Yep. Thank you for thank you. I need I need it. I'm I'm serious about it, guys. Uh, Kamisha says she like it. Uh, Kwame says sister speak to. Is that supposed to be Water Maya? Yeah, yeah. Alicia says, let's stop saying I can't. We can't speak into existence. Get connected with like-minded people. Write down your goals. Go to work. I, um, Kwame, some people have already reached out to Water Maya several times about having me on my show. He said he's going to do it, but he, he hasn't followed through on it. So you know, maybe if several of you all contact him, and I think maybe he likes to do his interviews in person. Maybe he doesn't like to do, some people don't like to do like this. You know what I mean? Um, so, and then uh, Shay said, Africans are naturally visual, visual and tangible learners. It will work. Yeah, I think so. I think when our people see it, even those who are reluctant and think that it's not something they want, that show would be changing a lot of mindsets. You know what I mean? I, that's what I believe. Uh, Larry, Larry said it could work with your first million dollars. Larry, we don't need a million dollars for that. I swear we don't. You know, for that show, you don't need a million dollars. We could do that show for less than a million dollars. Honest to God. Uh, so, Alicia says a great idea. Anyway. That's it. Uh, thank you all for joining. So I don't know how we go from here in terms of putting together what we have discussed for small groups. How do we organize that within Sankofa? I, I don't care. I, no, I, Sankofa can be a facilitator for putting groups together, families together. And we can be doing that in the meantime while we're still doing our fundraising. You know what I'm saying? Kamisha says it's a winner. I think so too. Uh, I think it's a great idea you know what i mean so i don't know some of y'all reach out to me afterwards and if y'all want to help join uh sankofa and try to organize families that we can put a program together that you know we can be getting putting families together and putting plans together for a repatriation for them and uh maybe the families can contribute to a pool of money uh you know for their group to go back. I don't know. I'm just coming up with some ideas. Y'all let me know what y'all think about it. And then once they get, they set a target amount of money, how, you know, for housing, we can, we, you know, and I know in Ghana, uh, Ghana, I think is a little bit more expensive than probably Gambia, Sierra Leone, uh, Senegal. I know a lot of people don't want to hear that, but it's the truth. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I know a lot, everybody want to go to Ghana, but Ghana, especially a Christ, is more expensive. I saw uh, them talking about a house for rent in in uh, in Gambia, and or you know uh, how much it costs to build a house in Gambia. And I was like, what? Because you can't build that same house in Ghana for that money. You know what I mean? So maybe some people need to start thinking about getting Ghana out their mind. I love Ghana. I gotta go to Ghana. My husband got there, and he ain't going nowhere else. So you know. I already know it's Ghana is it for me, but the cost of living in some of the other countries are far, far less than Ghana, right? So maybe some yeah. people, 
And Maybe just some... like my brother, my brother was sharing with me. I'm actually from Liberia. And he was telling me, no, a friend of mine actually was telling me that there are some places in Liberia where, where people are buying land for like eight, nine hundred dollars. And mm -hmm. I'm like, are you serious? Yes. And I'm like, <laughs> I saw a house that was so big. And the price that they said what it cost to build that house in the Gambia, that's why I was, I told my husband, I said, we can't compete with the Gambia. You know, we got a construction company in Ghana. I'm like, no. the, the even that means that the cost of materials, the labor, everything, Ghana is more expensive. Yeah, I'm just going to be, mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest. It's, it's the truth. I ain't going to lie to y'all. I ain't going to never tell y'all no lie. I'm going to be tell you the straight up truth. As much as I love Ghana, we're going to keep it real. That's right. Other countries are cheap. And the huh? thing is, if people want to go to Ghana, I mean, the 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 for me, the focus right now is just to get on the continent. Yeah. So it, it, let's say if you, you land in Gambia, right? And it's not Ghana. Every time, whenever you get yourself together, you can always move there. That's yeah. the thing. Once you're on the continent, you can you can migrate from one country to another, and it will be okay. But just right now, we're trying to find something not costly. You know, yeah. we want to find something affordable that everybody can afford. And that way, when you get on the continent and maybe you got your business established, you got yourself established, now you want to move to Ghana, you go to Ghana. You want to move to Nigeria, go ahead. You want to go to the Gambia or wherever you want to move to. The you know, the sky is your limit at that point. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's true. It's true. Um, it says, Gary, so what about linking up with some of these brothers and sisters with huge followings on YouTube to create more experiences like Field Sky and others? I've been doing that, brother. I've been on Field Sky show. Feels like I got a million. That's one of the first earlier ones I've been on. I've been on Lance Curve. I've been on Phil Scott. I've been on African Superstar. I've been on Dynast the Mirror. I've, that's what I've been doing the whole time since I lunch. I've been going, going and telling people about the program. I've been on Irritated Gene. It's not too much you can say I ain't already done. You know, what I mean? <laughs> in terms of going on shows and trying to spread the word to people about what we're doing. Then uh, Claudia said, what about South Africa? I think South Africa is probably the most expensive one. <laughs> I, I'm just guessing. I mean, you know, I don't know. I'm just guessing. But um, I think that one's probably going to be the most expensive. But anyway, all right. Anything else you sisters would like to add? Well, I definitely want to um, want to connect with some families and see, you know, what we can do. And I would also like to connect with you um, in private. Success to, Nation. Yeah. yeah. To just, well, y'all go ahead and exchange contact. Go ahead. Y'all got each other right here. I put my stuff in, um, in the comments, in the private chat here. I don't know who that goes to. Oh, okay. Oh. I just saw that. You want me to? Okay, I'll find you on Facebook. Yeah. I'm also on WhatsApp. Okay, I'm I'm also there too. I'm on WhatsApp as well. Okay, because that might be easier. I don't know. I'll just type my number. This is private chat, right? I can type my number there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So she can you see. See it. mine. Yes. Okay. I'll just. Okay. See, we just made a, a love yes, connection, right? We made a, a love, love connection. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we got to do, fam. This is what we got to do. Everybody don't have those resources. She's right. The amount of money that it takes to to just get the tickets and the, and if you're not going at the right time of the year, you're lucky if you could get a a ticket for eight nine hundred. That's a me when I see a ticket for eight nine hundred dollars, I I be I start dancing. You know what yeah. I mean? Because mm -hmm. most time tickets are gonna be twelve, thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars. And then if yeah. you try to go in uh in the uh, well, peak season round, you know it depends. Certain times of the year tickets are, are less than others. And so, and if you more than one of you all are going, if it's a family traveling, it can be very expensive yes. just to get the tickets. Uh, we haven't even talked about your housing because in Africa, you got to pay your rent up for a, a whole year. year. You know what I'm saying? They that shook all that. Some, me. That some, literally shook me when yeah. I, when I found that one out. I found that out last year, and and I was like, well, shoot, I could go ahead, I could pay this. They say you got to pay a year. I was like, oh, okay. But you know what? <laughs> I can tell you, it's it, it, it's a it's it's actually better. I found I when I pay it, and I know I got twelve months. Ain't nobody bothering me. Ain't nobody, you know. Mm -hmm. You know that's that's when you be at the roadside bar eating your uh, guinea fowl with Suya. <laughs> 
Because you, you're not thinking about rent. Rent pay. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you can live your life. You know what I mean? Uh, so, for I mean, it's it's just how you look at it. You know, it's done, and mm -hmm. you don't you don't have to think about it again until next year. You know? So it's true. It's true. I know I had to pay. I had to pay rent for my um my brothers and I think it was eight hundred dollars. That was the whole year rent. And so yeah. um yeah, so uh, and, and I didn't have to worry about it again until next year, you know, when mm -hmm. they called me, Oh, it's time for the rent and I was like, Okay. So it's really like you said, it's really better. It's really, mm -hmm. really better mm -hmm. to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh 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 the sister Daisy looking like what eight hundred dollars. She, you probably yeah, rented what, like a room or something. It, it wasn't a whole house. I think two bedroom. It was a two bedroom um, uh -huh. for them. Yeah, two bedroom house. Was it? Was it on a? What was it? Because I know in Ghana you can rent. A lot of the people rent like a room, you know. So it might not have a. It might not have a. It might have a community bath. You know what I mean? It might have a mm -hmm. common. No, this one was in Liberia. This is in Liberia. Oh. Yeah, so it was a two-bedroom house, I believe. Yeah, it was a two. See? Yeah, you see, I said everywhere is cheaper than Ghana. Everywhere, yeah, it was a two-bedroom house. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and you know the added uh uh perk for Liberia is you, you qualify for citizenship just because you're black because it's in their constitution. <laughs> really? Yes. Oh, tell me more. Okay, let's we'll talk. <laughs> Girl, go look up their constitution. Go look up Liberia's constitution sure. and look at the section on and citizenship. You, and you know I didn't know that. And you what? told you taught me that. <laughs> yes. You taught I've me that. I was like, oh my God, I'm really. I've been looking yeah. at putting my business there. I have a, a a a little business. I've been looking at um going there on the basis of business and establishing my business in one of the countries. So I guess that's another place for me to investigate. Yep, now. look at Liberia. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I didn't know. So the cost of living is that that low. See, that's what I'm saying. A lot of people, I think, because a year of return and stuff, so some people stuck on Ghana. If it weren't, if it weren't for being married to a Ghanaian and having all the stuff that we already got set up in Ghana, I would be looking at some other places. Because yeah. other places are far cheaper. You know what I mean? I'm just gonna keep it real with y'all. I love to see y'all in Ghana. Y'all can visit me in Ghana. You know what I mean? But you don't have to live there if your money don't uh, you know go somewhere where your money gonna make you more comfortable. That's that's what I would say. All right. Thank you, ladies, for joining and contributing to hey little man. Hey baby, how you doing? Say hi to Auntie Yah. What turn back around, boy? <laughs> Look, <laughs> say hi to your auntie, y'all. Look how he looking, guys. You not gonna tell me hey? Your little handsome. You rolling your eye? Look at. <laughs> he, he just woke up from that. He just woke up oh, from his okay. nap. <laughs> All right. He is not having it today. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Let's so do much. it again. Let's do it again. Y'all take okay. care. Thank you. So All much. right. Bye bye. <clears throat> All right, fam. That's it. I'm out. I'll talk to y'all later. Y'all have a good weekend. I love y'all. Peace. Black Power. And hit me up if y'all got some ideas on what we need to do. I'm open. Sister's open. All right. Bye bye. <laughs>